Here are the 13 worst smokers in Hollywood history. Stay tuned to the end to find out who was the worst. Number 13, Lana Turner. Lana Turner, the glamorous Hollywood icon known for her beauty and dramatic performances, had her own complicated relationship with smoking. While not among the heaviest smokers in Hollywood history, she was often seen with a cigarette in hand, epitomizing the smoking culture of her era. Her on-screen allure and sultry smoking scenes in films like The Postman Always Rings Twice contributed to the glamorization of cigarettes. However, despite her iconic status, Turner faced health challenges in her later years, including lung cancer. Her life serves as a reminder of the era when smoking was synonymous with Hollywood's allure, even for its brightest stars. Number 12. William Tolman William Tolman, best known for his role as District Attorney Hamilton Berger in the classic TV series Perry Mason, had a penchant for smoking that mirrored his on-screen persona. Throughout his career, he was frequently seen with a cigarette in hand, both in character and off-camera. Talman's heavy smoking habit, which extended to multiple packs a day, ultimately took a toll on his health. Tragically, he was diagnosed with lung cancer in 1967, and just a year later, he lost his battle with the disease at the age of 53. His story serves as a sobering reminder of the dangers of smoking, even for those in the spotlight of Hollywood. Number 11. John Cazale John Cazale, a lesser-known but immensely talented actor, left an indelible mark on Hollywood with his short yet remarkable career. Best known for his roles in iconic films like The Godfather and The Deer Hunter, Cazale's contribution to cinema was profound. However, his personal life was plagued by a tragic habit. Cazale was an avid smoker, often seen with a cigarette in hand off-camera. This habit would ultimately prove fatal as he was diagnosed with lung cancer. Despite his illness, Cazal continued to act, delivering powerful performances until his untimely death at the age of 42. His legacy serves as a poignant reminder of the devastating consequences of smoking in Hollywood. Number 10. Amanda Blake Amanda Blake best known for her role as Kitty Russell in the popular TV series Gunsmoke, led a life marked by the perils of smoking. Despite her on-screen success, Blake was a heavy smoker, and this habit would eventually contribute to her health problems. Over the years, she developed a strong addiction, smoking around four packs of cigarettes per day. Even after health warnings became prevalent, Blake continued to smoke, and it is reported that she couldn't go more than 10 minutes without lighting up a cigarette. While she managed to live a relatively long life, passing away from AIDS-related complications at the age of 60, her excessive smoking is a cautionary tale of the dangers of this addictive habit, even for Hollywood stars. Number 9. Lucille Ball Lucille Ball, the beloved star of the iconic TV show I Love Lucy, brought laughter into countless households with her unparalleled comedic talent. While she charmed audiences with her zany antics on screen, off screen, she was a dedicated smoker, a habit she shared with her husband and co-star, Desi Arnaz. The sight of Lucy and Desi lighting up on their show was common, and it reflected the cultural acceptance of smoking during their era. Despite her endearing on-screen persona, Lucille Ball's smoking habit was one aspect of her life that posed health risks. A stark reminder of the prevalence of this dangerous habit in Hollywood's golden days. Number 8. Betty Davis Betty Davis, known as the Queen of the Warner Lot, had a heavy smoking habit that aged her significantly. Despite this, she lived to the age of 81. Betty holds the record for being the first actor to receive five consecutive Oscar nominations for acting, winning two. While some argue that Humphrey Bogart made smoking look cool on screen, others believed that Betty Davis deserves that title. During a roast of Davis, actor Henry Fonda humorously remarked that he had been close to her for 38 years and had these cigarette burns to prove it. 
Surprisingly, Betty only smoked in about a quarter of her movies and was never a spokesperson for any cigarette brand. However, throughout her career, she became closely associated with smoking on screen. This was because Betty believed in portraying realism in her films. When her characters were smokers, she insisted on accurately depicting their habits by having lit cigarettes in her hands throughout the entire movie, mimicking the behavior of real-life smokers. Betty Davis not only smoked heavily on screen, but also off-screen. Cigarette smoking played important roles in some of her movies and helped her create memorable characters. She had a strong addiction, smoking around four packs of Vanguard cigarettes per day. Davis claimed she couldn't go more than 10 minutes without lighting up a cigarette, which explains why she is often seen holding one in interviews. Even her dentist couldn't deter her from smoking, as she would smoke in the waiting room and even in the dental chair. Despite her excessive smoking, Davis surprisingly managed to live a long life without being affected by smoking-related diseases. She eventually passed away from breast cancer, but it is reported that she continued smoking around 100 cigarettes daily until her death. Number 7. Humphrey Bogart Let's dive into the intriguing story of Humphrey Bogart, who was not only influential in making smoking look cool on screen, but also experienced the devastating consequences of his habit in his private life. Bogart smoked two packs of cigarettes daily and was known to be a heavy drinker. He was constantly coughing due to the effects of smoking, and his tiredness and memory loss from excessive drinking were evident. Interestingly, Bogart's on-screen relationship with cigarettes had a fascinating origin. In the early days of filmmaking, screenplays contained fewer physical directions and often consisted of long monologues. During a shoot, Bogart expressed his boredom to the director and jokingly suggested that the scene would only be interesting if there were two camels engaging in a rather scandalous act in the background. Although the director didn't entertain that idea, he proposed that Bogart incorporate smoking into the scene. This clever suggestion served two purposes. First, it provided Bogart with an action to break up the monotony of the monologue, adding depth to his performance. Second, the act of smoking captivated the audience's attention as they focused on Bogart's face during each drag, keeping them engaged in the scene. As a result, Bogart started smoking in every film, creating a strong association between his cool and detached characters and cigarettes. Bogart's on-screen persona was so iconic that cigarettes became popularly known as bogies as a slang term. Unfortunately, his smoking not only influenced millions of other people to try it themselves, thinking it was cool, but it also led to his untimely demise. Bogart put off seeking medical attention for his cough and other health issues until 1956, when he finally visited a doctor. It was then revealed that he had developed esophageal cancer as a direct result of his long-standing smoking habit. Thus, his remarkable career was tragically cut short due to the very habit he had made synonymous with coolness. Number 6. Errol Flynn In the late 1930s, Errol Flynn was a highly successful actor, starring in popular films such as The Charge of the Light Brigade, the adventures of Robin Hood, and the private lives of Elizabeth and Essex. He shared a house with David Niven, which they nicknamed Cirrhosis by the Sea, where they hosted wild parties and had a great time. Although Niven once remarked that Flynn would always disappoint you, he later praised Flynn's drinking abilities and mentioned how Flynn and John Huston would engage in bare-knuckle boxing at dull parties for entertainment. Flynn had a reputation for consuming alcohol excessively and even devised a clever plan of injecting vodka into oranges to bring on to movie sets where alcohol was prohibited. He also struggled with an addiction to opium, which along with his indulgent lifestyle began to affect his appearance. Flynn was also involved in scandals that the movie studio tried to cover up. He had a notorious reputation for his romantic relationships and was rumored to have an exceptionally large phallus. There are tales of him playing the piano with it at parties, 
but this didn't bring lasting happiness to him or others. Despite being married three times, Flynn never found true happiness and had a troubling attraction to much younger women. In 1942, he faced allegations of statutory rape involving two teenage girls. Although he was acquitted with the support of Warner Brothers' legal team, not everyone believed in his innocence, and his career never fully recovered. In the late 1940s, Flynn's health began to deteriorate due to excessive drinking, drug use, and smoking. Although he experienced a brief resurgence in the 1950s, portraying drunken characters in films, his body couldn't withstand the years of abuse. Tragically, at the age of only 50, Errol Flynn suffered a devastating heart attack while staying at Dr. Grant Gould's apartment in Vancouver, Canada. He had traveled there with the intention of selling his beloved yacht, the Zaka, to his old friend George Caldo. The yacht held immense sentimental value to him, but financial struggles compelled them to part ways with it. In fact, Flynn had primarily resided on the yacht during his final years. The autopsy results were shocking, revealing that Flynn's body appeared to belong to a 75-year-old man. His liver was severely damaged, indicating that he likely had only 9 to 12 months left to live. This grim revelation underscored the toll that his excessive lifestyle had taken on his health. Tragically, Flynn persisted with his unhealthy ways until his death, leaving behind a legacy of excess and self-destruction. Number 5. Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr., the Rat Pack, was famous for their cool image, which included indulging in vices like drinking, womanizing, and smoking. However, recent revelations have shown that much of it was an act. During their performances, artists like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. would pretend to drink whiskey by sipping apple juice. Contrary to popular belief, they were often the ones being pursued by women rather than actively chasing after them. While smoking was one aspect they couldn't fake, Sammy Davis Jr. was particularly known for his smoking habit. He would even smoke on stage, which was risky for anyone's health but especially harmful for a singer. One of his signature moves involved taking a puff during a song and exhaling the smoke as he sang the next note. Although this may have looked cool, it had negative consequences for his well-being. Nat King Cole once warned Sammy about the damage his constant smoking could cause, explaining how the intense heat from the cigarette smoke was harming his vocal cords. Unfortunately, Sammy didn't pay much attention to the advice. In the 1980s, when he was experiencing vocal issues, his manager took him to see a throat specialist who confirmed that Nat King Cole was right. Singing while smoking had caused inflamed nodules on Sammy's vocal cords. Number 4. Rod Serling Rod Serling, the mastermind behind the iconic TV series The Twilight Zone, was hailed as a creative genius in Hollywood. Despite his tremendous success both as an artist and a cultural sensation, he never truly found contentment within himself. Plagued by self-doubt, he turned to various vices, including heavy drinking and smoking, which intensified after The Twilight Zone concluded. Scared of failing to replicate the triumph of his masterpiece, Serling drowned his worries in copious amounts of alcohol and consumed four packs of cigarettes each day. As he struggled to make a successful comeback, he found himself drifting from one project to another and occasionally taking on acting roles. However, internally, Serling was a wreck. Tormented by doubt and self-loathing, he resorted to alcohol and cigarettes as self-medication. In 1975, he had to undergo bypass surgery due to a clogged artery, a consequence of years of mistreating his body. Tragically, during the operation, Serling's heart gave out, unable to withstand the strain. He passed away at the age of 50, his heart ravaged by the years of self-inflicted damage. If you are enjoying this video so far, then hit that subscribe button, and we will continue to make videos like this. Stay tuned until the end to find out who was the worst smoker in Hollywood history. Number 3. Jackie Gleason 
Jackie Gleason skyrocketed to fame as the unforgettable Ralph Cramden in The Honeymooners, imprinting his larger-than-life presence onto the hearts of audiences nationwide. His colossal frame and outrageously hilarious persona consumed the screen, capturing the adoration of fans everywhere. Yet behind the scenes, Gleason's larger-than-life antics didn't stop. He possessed a voracious appetite that matched his immense stature. Weighing between 230 and 330 pounds, he perpetually danced between these two extremes. Gleason's insatiable hunger led him to indulge in multiple meals in a single setting, with a grand finale of devouring a gallon of ice cream, leaving onlookers astounded. However, it wasn't only his eating habits that contributed to Gleason's unhealthy lifestyle. He had a profound fondness for the bottle, guzzling down whiskey as if it were mere water. A scotch on the rocks was his cream bun on ice, and he rarely found himself sober. According to his vice, he was a chain smoker, effortlessly burning through five packs of cigarettes daily. His size and these detrimental habits made mobility a considerable challenge for Gleason. Sadly, his indulgent lifestyle even took a toll on his libido. Gleason widely remarked, Sex for a fat man is much ado about puffing, emphasizing how his excessive habits impacted every aspect of his life. Tragically, Gleason persisted with his unhealthy ways until he succumbed to colon cancer at the age of 71, leaving behind a legacy of laughter and a cautionary tale of excess. Number 2. Yul Brenner Yul Brenner, known for his commanding presence both on the silver screen and the illustrious Broadway stage, had a dark secret. He consumed a staggering five packs of cigarettes each day. Unfortunately, the consequences of this vice eventually caught up with him, and he lost his life to lung cancer, a direct result of his long-standing smoking habit. Before his passing, Yul Brenner embarked on a poignant endeavor, filming a commercial for the American Cancer Society. In that eerie advertisement, his voice raspy and frail, he implored viewers not to follow in his footsteps. Remarkably, he even acknowledged that the commercial would air posthumously, emphasizing the urgency of his plea. As the camera fixed on him, Brenner's eyes pierced through the screen, and with a haunting intensity he uttered, Now that I'm gone, don't smoke. Whatever you do, just don't smoke. This gripping footage was extracted from his appearance on Good Morning America, where he responded to a question about what he would convey to fellow smokers if he had the chance to speak to them from beyond the grave. This campaign proved to be both chilling and impactful, as Brenner transformed from a towering figure of health to a mere shadow consumed by the ravages of lung cancer. His addiction bore the weight of the blame for this tragic decline, leaving behind a somber reminder of the perils of such a destructive habit. Number 1. Clark Gable In the golden era of Hollywood, Clark Gable reigned supreme as an iconic American actor, earning the illustrious title of the King of Hollywood. His meteoric rise to fame was propelled by his unforgettable portrayal of Rhett Butler in the timeless 1939 epic Gone with the Wind. His final film, The Misfits, etched itself into the annals of cinema as a testament to his remarkable career. However, Gable's journey extended beyond the silver screen. In 1942, with his fame at its zenith, he made a remarkable decision that took him far from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, joining the U.S. Air Force. Gable, donning the rank of captain, embarked on an extraordinary adventure, leading a six-man motion picture unit. He trained and flew alongside the 351st Heavy Bomb Group, capturing their exploits in a gunnery training film. His wartime odyssey unfolded predominantly in the United Kingdom, stationed at Weatherby and Holbrook. While stationed at RAF Holbrook, Gable's audacity soared to new heights. The renowned actor, driven by an unyielding spirit, flew on five combat missions, including a daring excursion to Germany, serving as an observer gunner aboard B-17 Flying Fortresses. For his courageous contributions, Gable earned the Distinguished Air Medal and the coveted Distinguished Flying Cross, 
evoking the admiration of none other than Adolf Hitler himself. The deranged dictator held Gable in higher esteem than any other actor, offering a substantial reward for his capture, unharmed and delivered into his clutches. When his time in the Army Air Forces concluded, Gable emerged as a major, leaving behind a legacy of valor. Tragically, the curtain fell on Gable's extraordinary life in Los Angeles on November 16, 1960, succumbing to his fourth heart attack. His health had been ravaged by decades of indulging in his vices. Gable's love affair was smoking, a relentless habit that included three packs of unfiltered cigarettes daily for over 30 years, as well as cigars and copious bowls of pipe tobacco. Unfortunately, these habits took a severe toll. In 1964, he underwent surgery to remove most of his left lung due to the detrimental effects of tobacco. Regrettably, 15 years later, complications from stomach cancer claimed his life at the age of 72. And there you have it, folks, the 10 worst smokers in Hollywood history. While the allure of Hollywood may have glamorized smoking, it's crucial to acknowledge the health risks associated with this habit. But as we've seen, not all Hollywood stars succumbed to the smoke. Some fought back, conquering their addiction and inspiring others as well. All right, that's it for today. Thanks to all of you that are watching our videos right to the end. We love having you here and appreciate you subscribing. See you in the next video.